Hi guys, it's Troy back at the full setup here today um, and I just wanted to show you quickly me overclocking my i5-4690K. Now, anyone of my subscribers, you have, and you've probably already seen this video, and to anyone that hasn't, please go have a look, but I recently managed to uh, pick up, dipping into the second-hand market, an i5-4690K and an Asus Z97AR motherboard for the really good price of £180. But the motherboard was the cheapest part. I paid an absolute bargain price of £45. So even though it's a Z97, you sort of be thinking here, is this board going to allow an overclock? Is it screwed up? Well, it's working absolutely fine. I've um, achieved a clock all the way up to 4.7 gigahertz, although due to my cooler, which is a Corsair H55 with dual SP120s push-pull, um, I've backed it down to 4.5 gigahertz. So I just wanted to show you quickly how I get to that. Um, and I've already tested out all of these different clocks. Um, you know, I've benchmarked all different softwares. I've run ADA64 normally is the one that I run for about between six and 12 hours and when it comes to a torture test with prime 95 i never really run it for much more than four hours i know some people like to run it for 24 hours at a time but i don't understand when you're going to be putting your pc under that much stress so each to your own on that one so the first thing we need to do always the first thing i do before i start doing any overclocking is disable turbo mode anything like that energy efficient crap yeah we're just going to get rid of that that needs to be disabled and then we're also going to change the DRAM frequency as well. You want to set that to the lowest that you've got. And then once you've got a nice stable CPU clock, you up your RAM. I already know my RAM works, so I'm going to put it at 1866 that it's um, supported. But this HyperX Fury RAM, I've already been able to overclock it to 2400 MHz at 1.65 volts. Only reason I'm leaving it at 1866 is that I'm not using this PC for video editing or rendering, and there won't be really any difference in FPS, so I'm just going to take a little bit of stress off the motherboard. So, now we want to set the overclock tuner um, to manual. Now, you might not see this. This is an Asus motherboard as well, so it might not all be the same, but you sort of be able to take this and figure it out. So we've got the DRAM voltage. We've done all that. Overclock tuner. EPU power disabled. Then we're going to go to the Digi VRAM. Now, the CPU load line calibration. We're going to need to set this to level 8 for most of the overclocks that I want to achieve. And I'm going to go back now. So, what else have we got left to do? What's next? What's next? Ah, CPU core. That's the most important thing. So, now we need to do the CPU core. And we're going to do sync all cores. We want all cores to be the same. As you can see, it's already put the 45 in that I did. Now, let's talk voltage because voltage is the last little bit. Now, obviously, I already know the voltages to go with this. Just have a play yourself. But 1.2 is what I want. 1.2 works brilliant for me. Now, when I was overclocking up to about 4.2, 4.3 gigahertz, I was using 1.5. When I started to go to the 0.3s, 0.4s and stuff, that's when I was going to like 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.5, 1.75, you know, little increments. Um, and the reason I've sort of backed down and not gone for the uh, full 40, like uh, 4,600 megahertz or 4.7 overclock is because to get 4.6, I had to take this to 1.25. And to get it to 4.7, I was sort of in the territory of 1.275 and 1.3, which is just way too much for the cooler that I've got. So we're going to back that down to 1.2. And I'm generally averaging on temps. Um, it's sort of the idle temperature. I get a bit better one once it gets into my fan tuning. It's, yeah, what you can see there really, between 35 and 14, and the max temperature, I'm not really ever going over 65 degrees, but I'm gonna do a video on the uh, Corsair H55 and push-pull in the next few days, so go and have a look. So that's it, basically. Now I just need to go save changes, restart, and just wait for a boot. I've got to remove this picture as well. I think the motherboard's from PC Specialist, so I want that gone. I might put my own picture in there, but I don't want people to think oh, I didn't put this PC together because I did. <laughs> as you can see, my monitor is super dirty as well. And we're in. 